All right, everybody, well, today we're going to talk about uh, some different foot pathology treatment, uh, specifically uh, the different theories behind what's going on with the plantar fascia and plantar fasciitis. Uh, what a lot of people uh, will say is going on is that the plantar fascia is just being been irritated and requires some stretching. Uh, you'll see people treating it with, with plantar fascia specific stretches, uh, rolling over a, a ice bottle um, or on a, a lacrosse ball, that sort of thing where you're trying to break up adhesions that are said to be in the plantar fascia. Uh, something that I, we covered in our residency training is the, the tissue specific and mechanical uh, theory behind plantar fasciitis, if you want to call it that. Uh, something to consider is the fact that the plantar fascia is not a contractile uh, uh, piece of tissue. It, it should not just all of a sudden be, develop these adhesions and become painful. The, often the reason why it becomes painful is because of, it, of being overly stretched. As you can see here, this is a, a poor foot model that unfortunately doesn't have any of the uh, moving parts. Plantar fascia attaches into the digits and all the way back to the calcaneus. Normally, you have a few uh, uh, intrinsic muscles that are running through here, and along with some extrinsic that are coming from up on the tibia, that provide a lot of stability to the foot. When those muscles become weak, the foot goes into some slight pronation, or a level of pronation at some part of the foot, and the tension builds up on the plantar fascia, uh, which can be at the insertion of the calcaneus, and that's why people develop pain. So if something is being overly stretched, why are we stretching it more for our treatment? If you are doing the, the stretch where you're pulling the toes up like this, I'll demonstrate myself, going like this right here, sure it feels good while doing it. Uh, I don't know a stretch that doesn't feel good when doing it. Uh, but is it actually improving the mobility? Do we need to improve the mobility of an already stretched uh, tissue? No, that's not necessary. Same thing with trying to roll out those adhesions that you feel. Uh, it, it's going to feel good, possibly when you're done, but that's just the normal response due to stimulation of some of the neural components. Uh, so instead, what we need to be doing is building up some of the mobility of the distal and proximal joints, and then the strength and motor control of the muscles inside. So what, what we should be doing is looking at, say, the tail curl joint, uh, maybe the uh, first MTP, uh, maybe some of the forefoot or midfoot uh, articulations and anything that's restricted trying to improve that so we get a decreased overall pronation force that is transmitted into the plantar fascia. Uh, what we can do to strengthen some of those muscles that to then support the arch would be foot intrinsic exercises. Now, what you'll see people do a lot of times is say they're using a band to try and strengthen the toe curls. Maybe you'll see them doing something like this, they're just curling their toes. And while that might help a little bit, remember that you have both your intrinsic and extrinsic muscles. And it's more so the intrinsic ones that we need to be aware of in training for uh, the stability of the foot. So instead, if you move the foot into plantar flexion and then do the curls, it gets a lot more specific and you'll notice a lot more fatigue in the foot. Almost all the time my patients begin to develop some cramping in their foot simply, simply because those muscles aren't used to being used. So one of those exercises is plantar flexion, yeah, keeping the ankle in plantar flexion and then curling the toes like that. Another one is uh, keeping the toes curled and flexing the foot. Same thing, get a lot. You'd think that the, the fatigue might be in the calf, it is actually just in the foot right now. Uh, another one for strengthening those types of muscles is say you have more marbles or some kind of uh, pebble to pick up, keeping the foot in plantar flexion, picking up, placing it in something else, or doing your towel curls with the foot in plantar flexion. 
Another thing that I often notice in these patients, again, you always want to go by a case by case basis and look at, to see if each exercise is applicable to that patient, uh, is walking with uh, toe extension for use of dorsiflexion. So when people walk and pick up their foot, you'll notice the feet, the toes are really extended each time they pick up their feet. They become over-reliant on the ex extrinsic toe extensors. So something to try and train the, the tibialis anterior more specifically is, if I had someone holding this here, you keep the toes curled and dorsiflex. And again, I'm feeling some cramping on the, in the plantar surface of the foot, but it also gets more specifically the tibialis anterior as opposed to some of the toe extensors. Uh, another exercise, again, for retraining foot positioning is a calf raise with a soccer ball between the medial malleolus.